Well, if we have an incline at angle theta and some mass here, the force exerted by gravity is mg. That's interconvertible if we understand Newton's second law, and that force is mass times acceleration, right? Well, then the contribution of the gravitational force to the force in this thing is mg. Okay? Now, as we demonstrated in lab, you put something down on a meter stick and pull it downward and release it, it goes off in this direction, indicating, at least plausibly, that there's a force being exerted perpendicular to the ramp. Okay? If it's a meter stick. And if it's a solid ramp where things are compressing, they compress symmetrically and expand when you release the weight and it still goes perpendicular to the incline. Okay? That's called the normal force. The force that results from that compression or bending. And that's your normal force, which I'll designate as F sub M. Okay? Now, is it possible that these two forces add up to zero? Totally not. They're not in the same direction. What well, theta is zero, they are. Does it look like zero? Okay, yes, you're right. There is a case of theta is zero, they would be equal, right? Or they could be equal and opposite, in which case you'd have zero in that force, right? Now, if you got a weak ramp and you know, it's collapsing, well, you know, that we, we don't bother with that. Uh, we just make sure the ramp is strong enough, right? And that's our implicit assumption. Um, so if these are the only two forces acting, well, the resultant of these forces is going to be then, well, we just put them head to tail. You got mg down here, and you got this one here. And I guess we'll put an arrow over that. And you have the result of these forces. And that, that force happens to be straight down the incline. Okay? Now, how do we analyze this force? Well, we go ahead and put a coordinate system on this thing. And our coordinate system is going to be such that the x-axis is along the incline. Okay? And the y-axis is perpendicular to the incline. Which means, of course, that it's going to be parallel to the normal force. Okay? Now, this coordinate system works better than one where x is horizontal and y is vertical because in that case, the only thing that's parallel to an axis is the mg, okay? The weight. Whereas here, the net force is going to turn out to be parallel to the x-axis, normal force parallel to this axis, and for that and a lot of other reasons, the analysis is very simple here and much more complicated if you have the horizontal x-axis. Okay? Well, we can analyze this rather easily. We, and I'm not going to do right triangles. That's what you all did in statics. Okay? And that complicates things because you have to make decisions if you use right triangles. Is this thing positive or is it negative? You always have to make that decision. Okay? And I don't like to do physics having to make that decision. Although intuitively there are good reasons to think about it that way. But if I say, okay, let's see, this mg force is at an angle of, in this case, 270 degrees plus theta with the positive x-axis. And of course the normal force is at 90 degrees, right? Okay? Which means that without having to do any thinking, the x and y components of mg
is mg times the cosine of 270 degrees plus theta. And mg y is mg times the sine of 270 degrees plus theta. Direct result of circular definition of the trigonometric functions. Just ignoring right triangles. Right triangles are important. I have nothing against them. But you get a more elegant model this way. And if you've had statics and used to doing it with right triangles, put that out of your mind for now. Check yourself with right triangles. I want you to use circular angles. Okay, circular definition. Because right now, with circular definition, the x component is automatically whatever the magnitude is times the cosine of that angle. And this is automatically the magnitude of the vector times the sine of the angle, always. So if you get the angle right, all I have to do is say the x is the cosine, the y is the sine, and you don't have to get confused. No confusion. Okay, there we have it. So now we can replace the mg force with its components because the mg vector is automatically equal to mg times the j vector, uh, mgy times the j vector, and mgx. Don't have a good place to do this, so I'll just put it in a bad place. mgx times the i vector. Now the mg vector is gone. We don't have it anymore. We don't want it anymore. We used it to find these. So we lightly cross it out to indicate that it's not there anymore. We've replaced it with the J and I components of the MG vector. Okay? So now we have everything, all forces, in the direction of one or the other coordinate axes.